So the first one, if you haven't poured it already or if you've got something else, here's a great one to start with. Uh, I always say bubbles. I think all wonderful relationships should begin with bubbles. So life sparkles with, uh, with bubbles. There's no doubt about it. But um, we came across a beautiful Prosecco, a small family. I learned a lot about Prosecco um, in the industry being 28 years. But I've noticed that a lot of Prosecco, a lot of that sparkling wine is a little bit cloying and sweet. And the stuff that gets to the U.S. is what usually is found on the grocery store's shelves and is not as approachable. Well, let me transport you to Northern Italy, uh, specifically an area called Veneto. And then within Veneto, a viticultural area, but also a town called Prosecco. That's right. We found a beautiful family uh, making these wonderful wines for over 70 years. And the story with Prosecco is that it is a town, but it is also a viticultural area. It's not the grape. The grape is Glera, 100% Glera. This is the uh, area, you guys can see up here, Northeast uh, Italy, Veneto. If you've been there, you know uh, some beautiful areas that and and uh and wines that come from this area really traditional methods and what they uh with this family that we found uh they make three wines that's right they they, they do a a brut which i'm yet to bring in this lovely extra dry that we're about to embark on and a sparkling rosé if you want to know about that sparkling rosé well you got to meet us the next time in october look up the date because I'll be back. This one is very unique and it's made in, um, in concrete fermentation tanks. One of the reasons for concrete as opposed to stainless steel or oak is that it still captures a lot of the aromatics and it allows the wine to breathe a lot more than stainless steel because in stainless steel it won't. Uh, barrel, well that's too much and we don't want to lose a lot of the product. So you really have a unique nuance what this wine is captures is really bright, bright acidity. There's a, a word that, it's actually a French word that the Italians lose, uh, use um, to, to describe the bubbles and the, the, the actual um, uh, substance of the bubbles. It's called perlage. The perlage is, uh, or, or basically the actual uh, how the bubbles uh, manifest in the wine is really apparent in this beautiful wine. I always recommend to use, uh, if not a flute, uh, certainly a wine glass, which is really nice. A lot of refreshing honeysuckle, green apple, and ripe pear is what I get in this wine. And unlike a lot of Prosecco, this is not cloying sweet. And that's one of the reasons that we found it and brought it uh, and we use it mostly for restaurants, but fine wines uh, accounts as well. Hey, uh, we got Chris Izzo coming in. I see him here. Chris is joining us. <clears throat> okay, so what you find here is if you've already tasted it, um, you may be asking, well, hey, what do I pair this with? Well, first of all, folks, I pair it with a glass. That's right. <laughs> just a glass. This doesn't need food. It's not the typical one where you say, well, well yeah, no, this will be a little bit better. You notice how drier it is? Notice how it doesn't leave that kind of filmy, sugary feeling at the, at the end. It's very clean. It's delicate. And I love it. If you're going to pair it, I love this with oysters. I love it with uh, spice, with uh, some vinaigrettes. But I also can pair this uh, with uh, some dry cheeses after after a dinner. How about that? Think about that. Oh, Susan Bo. Susan Bo is coming in. All right, Susan. Welcome, Susan. There you go. And uh, if you've had so, if you uh, if you're enjoying that beautiful, make sure that you put yourself on mute. And uh, if you have a question please don't hesitate and uh, or comment let me know what you think about the avc before we move on i'm going to check the chat bar there there you go just so you guys know this lovely wine also has a lovely score now i like to include some of these yeah. because 
we're pretty proud of it. As you can tell, um, you know, it's not every Prosecco will score a 92 point rating, <laughs> but this one has. And one, and it's, and it's evident because of the beautiful quality and value that this brings to the table. So this is officially what's uh, considered a DOC, Denominación de Originata Controlata. That's a separate uh, a presentation that we can make about the government standards of, of Italy. But that's basically what this means when you see it on the label. Well, it's from a controlled area. It's specifically controlled and it has to be all from Prosecco. And this one, as you know, is 100% Glera. Glera is the grape. So check out this. I like to read some of these uh, tasting notes, which is pretty cool. Sense of honeysuckle and gardenia. I don't really get the gardenia, but I do get that honeysuckle. And really wonder, lots of bubbles. I do get that little bit of an orange sickle, kind of a, a little bit of creaminess on the finish um, with a mid palate of some green apples. Beautiful and balanced. I hope you guys enjoyed. All right, let me check here. Okay. Anybody enjoy Prosecco over Cava or Champagne? I think Chris is or might. I can see him right there. <laughs> All right, good, good. I'll see some thumbs up. Very good. Excellent, excellent. All right. Now, um, if you're ready, let's go ahead and pour the next wine. I see some thumbs up. Thank you, Yvonne, for the thumbs up. You guys know how to give the thumbs up. You can give it to me just like that <laughs> or put it down on the, on the uh, annotation, on the toolbar, etc. cetera. You can, uh, you can cer certainly uh, throw the hands up. There's a little clapping uh, one as well. Pretty cool. Beautiful. Let's pour that lovely 